We are doing a four indie palettes, four different looks. I have some really interesting brand new smoking hot indie palettes to talk about today. I did receive all of these palettes in PR and I think you can use my discount code and Jessica at all of these four brands and get a little money off uh, in case you wanted to shop any of these palettes. We'll let you know right now though, this is not QVC. This is not a shop with me. This is not me telling you what palettes you need for summer. This is me showing you four palettes that are new in the indie community. I'm showing you some swatches. I'm showing you a look. I'm giving you my initial thoughts. And if you were interested in any of these palettes, I hope that this like mini first impression slash review is helpful for you. And if you aren't interested in new palettes, just see this as four different tutorials with some inspiration of how to maybe create something similar with shopping your own stash. What we're going to be creating today with is the new neutral palette by Gloss Gods. I usually don't do neutral things, but they're doing this really fun sandy neutral color with a little bit of burgundy and this multi-chrome that's in here. That's a little fun. We also have the, the Crow palette by Wicked Widow. They have a full collection. This one I think is up for pre-order now. I'm not a hundred. These palettes, the first three I'm talking about should be available. I'm not sure if the pre-order for this one is closed or not because it was a very popular release. I'm also not a hundred percent sure that my code works on this collab itself. You're going to have to try it and see for yourself. This is a more like cool tone, grungy, almost gothic kind of a palette. So we're creating with that as well. And then we have the Simply Posh Coastal palette. You know, I loved the Aurora Lights palettes that they came out with. And now they're bringing us something that's almost like a tropical beach kind of a feeling for the summertime. And I've already created another look with this one as well. And I will leave a link to that down below in case you want to see a second look with this palette, because I do have one, a second look as well with this palette. I will leave a link to that down below. And then the last palette is the one that I'm wearing today and this is the high temp palette by unearthly this one is a very bright summer high temp inspired palette i don't think i think that this is the only palette out of the ones that i'm showing you today that is actually not available yet and i will put the release date down below for this one in case you were interested in this and when i'm doing this one i will also be showing you because they released bronzers with this release and we will talk about that as well once we get into this one this is the fourth look i always leave some chapters and if you scroll over you can see some timestamps on the timeline in case you want to jump around in case you're more interested in one palette than another or in case you want to come back and just see the tutorials again for some inspiration. Thank you so much for being here and for liking these videos. These are some of my absolute favorite videos to film and I'm so excited that you like them too. Let's jump in to the looks and <laughs> I cannot wait to show you. These are some of the best looks I have done. Coastal palette. I've already done a look with the Coastal palette. I'm going to do a second look and I do have a first look with this palette. And if I remember, I will link that down below where I'm doing something neutral with the warm shades over here. But I want to do a bold smoky eye with this one. It's called salt water and I want to use that all over the lid. And I think I'm going to play with these mats. I'm going to start with this one and then I'm going to work into this one. And we're gonna take it from there. I also need some eye primer and a little bit more eh, of lip oil. I'm using the one from Merit. This one is in Falcon, I think. Yeah, it's the one from Merit. It's in Falcon. It's one of my most used lip oils. I've fallen in love with this one. The color is just absolutely fantastic. But eye primer and then deep sea. I'm gonna start with that one. I wanna do something smoky. So this is the deep sea. My under eyes are <laughs> a little scaly because I've been using a little bit extra tretinoin. I actually need to up my dosage a bit, but my under eyes today, they are not having it. I am going to be using this one. How do I want to do this smoky eye? I think I'm going to use this in the depth of my crease all the way in and then use a little bit of no maybe like this i'll use it like this and then i'll do the sea breeze next to it the one that's a little bit more greeny 
because I feel like the salt water, it's like green, blue, purple, you can see. And so I'll use this one next to this one. I'm just, I'm excited about a deep, smoky, colorful, like bottom of the sea look. So this is the color Sea Breeze. And you see, I used a little bit of that under my eye too. I'm just, I like with the dark color, I like to do a C around my outer, outer corner. And I like to lift it a little bit to lift my eye. But this is the other one, the dark color that's next to it. Oh, let's make sure that the eyeshadow primer is not bunching up with the hood that I have going on. So we're gonna do this one. Oh, that is a nice color. Oh, that is so pretty. Wow, okay, I'm very impressed with that one. We're doing that next to it. What a cool color. And I'm not taking this part as high up because you can see this hood here. I'm just taking it above the hood but not too high up. Oh my God, I have something in front of my eye and it's like, you know, when you can't see, it like turns all foggy. Probably had like lint or something. So I'm putting it above the, the little hood, just a little bit and I'm just gently blending upwards, outwards. Cause I don't want it to come too close to my brow here. Cause I feel like that closes off everything and changes the shape that I want. So this is the shape that I want. I really, really like that. We are gonna blend it out a bit and I think I'm gonna blend it out with this one on the inner part and this one on the outer part because I just kinda wanna use, I just kinda wanna use all the colors because I love these kind of looks. If you've been on my channel for a really long time, you know there was a time when I said that teal was like kinda my like least favorite like colorful color but I have realized that these kind of colors actually look really good on me because I love blue, but I also have a warm undertone. So these like a little greeny leaning colors actually look pretty decent on me. Okay, so I'm doing a little bit of the light blue out here. I'm just dusting it on and just blending it out a little bit. Just adding a little bit of that lighter color out here to have the blend be a little less choppy. You can see here it's a little bit more defined and here it becomes a little bit more blended. So adding a lighter color and just dotting it on the edge and then just small, either dragging or circular motions just to blend out the edge can really help with just smoothening things out a little bit. And then what I usually do, I do a little bit of that darker color again and I just dot on a little bit again to re-intensify and make sure that I didn't take away any of the, the intensity of the darker color. You can always go back and forth with colors. There's nothing that says that you cannot go back with a color again that you have like, you thought you were done applying. If you need more of it, if you need blending, if you need reapplying, if you need to sandwich the colors on top of each other, you do that anything you need to do to make it look good. I sometimes just start out with something that's a little almost splotchy, blobby. I just put stuff on and then I just blend and add as I go. The first color you put on doesn't have to be perfect until you are done with the look. Not even then does it need to be perfect, just good enough. So here's the light turquoise, the one that's above. Maybe I can show you, I'm not making sense. So I've been using this one in the outer corner with this one blending out. And now I've been using this one on the inner part and I'm gonna blend out with this one. The one that's like a little greeny mint and I'm doing the exact same thing. I'm just putting it on the edge. And with this one, I'm gonna blend even less because like I said, I don't want it to go all the way up to the brow. So I'm gonna do li like little, 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 careful, 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 because I don't want it to be too far up. Little small circular motions. But that is cute. Am I in focus? I don't know what's going on. <laughs> and I'll do a little bit of the light blue here as well. Again, if you like me, have a little, you can see my under eyes are a little, a little extra texture today. Blowing out your lower lash line can actually help. Tip from the coach. Ooh, I'm taking up the salt water. Oh, I'm gonna be spraying this one. And now we're at this stage and I want it to really stick, but I also want it to be precise. I want it to be opaque. Oh my God, I'm spraying the 
like not even on the brush. And we're putting this, I'm always I start in the middle of the eye just to see like <laughs> where we are at. Look at that shift. So let me put a little bit more on the outer part. Like I said, this is going to be a smoky eye with the shimmer, but I don't like having the shimmer all the way to the outer corner because I feel like that makes my eye look extra textured. I don't like the shape that that makes my eye like get. So I usually like reapply a little bit of matte out here. But if you have a color that has a shift, the more surface you put the color on, the more visible the shift is. So I'm using a little bit of the deep sea and you can see I'm just doing a little wedge in the outer corner that goes in. I feel like that just gives a little depth and it just helps with the shape of this eye look. I think that that looks really cool. I'm going to put like a random minty matte in the inner corner. And I think this look is finished. A little mascara, I guess. It's fun. It's bright. It's colorful. It's smoky. It is smoky for sure. And I think this mascara is like officially out. I'm using the Tower 28, but I think it is officially out and I need to open my new one. Actually, let me just show you because this is the look with like mascara and everything on and I'm just putting a little bit of mint matte in the inner corner just to brighten up that like absolute inner space and I don't want I like don't like putting shimmers there if I can avoid it because I feel like it really um just makes that space look I don't like it I prefer a matte I think you can see I have this hood here as well that's starting to form and mattes just help with that a lot more I did some mint in my waterline too but that is cute right let me put on some falsies and we can see the final look. Also, this highlighter is so beautiful. This is actually the highlighter from Merit. Is that not so pretty? It just looks so dewy. I really like how this look turned out. It really did turn out to this like smoky bluish green that I was hoping for. And that shimmer is just such a good shimmer shadow. I really do love Simply Posh Cosmetics palettes and I really love how they're putting them out because for me it's very easy to jump in between and just try different things but they also lay it out in a way that like if you just want to do one row they're telling you this goes together this goes together I just feel like it's very easy to work with I do wish that they would include one matte that's even lighter to be used as like an inner corner highlight because for me this palette does not have anything like that for me that's a nitpicky thing though because like you saw literally reached into something and just put something in it's not that deep that's just a personal preference not necessarily like a critique of the quality of the color story it's just a personal preference which again that's someone with my skin tone uh, talking if you have a deeper skin tone than me then you have several of options here to choose to do something like that with but let's get into the second look i'm actually going to do a neutral look with the new palette from gloss Gods. So this is the Let's Get Nude palette by Gloss Gods. Gloss Gods is a Swedish-based indie brand, and I really want to use this one. You see the, the multi-chrome here? It's like a peach gold beige. I don't even know. I love it. I love when nude palettes or neutral palettes include a special shade. That's not the typical green gold pink. You know what I'm talking about. So I really appreciate that. So I want to use that. And I'm thinking, I think to keep this brown, I did a green lip. Because I just can't keep it neutral. But I think I'm just going to do this one, this one, and maybe the lightest one over here. And then we'll go in with some shimmers. This is where we'll start. So this is Dare to Bear. 
which is the dark brown there is a lot of kick up in the pan but it also means that the shadow is pigmented and picking up pretty easy on the brush i just wanted to do the dark one first because i want to have contrast i love contrast in a deep look and to make sure that the darkest color is looking as dark as it possibly can, I like to not layer it on top of something because as soon as you layer a dark shadow on top of a lighter shadow, they're going to partially mix together and the lighter pigment is going to lighten up the darker pigment of the darker shadow in most eyeshadow formulas. And not all, but in most. So we're starting with the darker one just because I want this drama out here. I think I'm just gonna leave it like this for now and then we'll go into the, it's called Sunburned, which is the um, second darkest color. So this is the shade Sunburned and I'm just putting that next to it. Oh, what a lovely color. And I'm also gonna be putting that a little bit on the edge. That's such a nice like milk chocolate and now i'm reapplying a little bit of the darkest brown and i am blending just to make sure that again we're not losing that depth because i do want this to be dramatic i want this to be says the woman with the green lips clearly clearly that's what i'm going for and I want the contrast to be there. So I'm just reapplying some of that. And then we're gonna go in with a smaller brush. These are all cinch brushes. I always have them linked down below. This is my own brand, Cinch Beauty. I'm gonna go in with the EO4. And this is the shade Birthday Suit, that lightest color. And I'm gonna put that. It's like a light, slightly peachy beige. And we're putting that in here. And we're also going to use a little bit of that to blend on the edge. Again, like we did in the first look, just softening the edge a little bit. That is actually really yummy. I'm not even into neutrals, but when I wear neutrals, I'm like, oh, that looks really good. Just doesn't inspire me as much as a green lip. <laughs> So I did the exact same colors on my lower lash line too. And I was thinking this one, it's called Bear It All. Let's do that one. Let me actually change to a different brush. Let's do that one in the inner corner. Oh, I love colors like that in the inner corner to just brighten everything up and make me look like I slept 12 hours, woke up as a new human being. Now that we have it like this, I mean, this looks good. This is a look on its own, honestly, but we're gonna do this multi-chrome and we are gonna see how this one will look. Oh, it picks up beautifully. It's a little flaky on the brush, but it picked up beautifully. Ooh, ooh, ooh. So I'm gonna spray this because when they pick up like this, they usually go on really good either with a finger or if you spray it a little bit, just to make sure that it's like actually sticking to the matte shadows on your eye and you're not getting a lot of fallout and the flakes hold together. Okay, that's really pretty. <gasps> Look at that shift. Oh, it's like it. It's like almost like a green gold to this super vibrant peach. So I'm putting this all over my lid and I am gently just tapping on the edge to make it like not be too sharp of an edge. And I'm not putting it in my outer, outer corner because like I've said before, I don't love that look on me. I'm going to actually go back with the dark brown again, the dare to bear, and I'm just going to tap a little bit on top to really get that thing to like flow together. And I think the same with the um, birthday suit, the color that I had here, I'm just going to apply some on top. But that looks so cool. It's like a green gold peach. Ooh, ooh, ooh. 
Now this is a neutral look that I can get behind. It is dramatic. It has a multi-chrome. It's looking really fun. There's a green lip involved. But like, not even with the green lip, it's still a super nice look. And I love doing neutral looks like this, when it's really dark in the inner corner and really light in the inner corner. It gives you that drama that just gives you an oomph without using colors. If that's not your jive, listen, colors is not for everyone. Some people's favorite color is brown and there's nothing wrong with that. I'm not saying that color is better than neutrals. I'm saying that you should wear what you like. And if you like browns, maybe you can try this technique. All in all, I really liked the palette. I thought everything worked really beautifully. Let's get into look number three. Okay, third look, we are playing with the Kroll palette. I've actually already swatched this one, so I already know what I wanna do. And I really wanna do something red. And I wanna play with this like blue shadow that has a lot of sparkles in it. And I wanna play a little bit with this one, Vengeance, that has like the multi, it's like black metallic with like multicolored shimmer or like glittery sparkle specks. Sparkle specks, yes. Um, that's, uh, that's what, yes. Yes, sparkle specs. So I'm gonna actually start with Immortal, which is the dark red. And I'm thinking, I'm like, what am I doing? But I wanna do this a very dark red. I have something that's itching me. I wanna make this a really dark red. I love red eyeshadow. I just really, really love red eyeshadow. I'm just packing this on. You can see I'm like, pack, 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 and like, pushing it into the primer because I want it to be as opaque as possible. I never bother with making it... I know everybody has different techniques when it comes to eyeshadows. I usually like to put the color down first and then worry about the blend, especially if I'm doing something that's like, I really do be having something here. <laughs> especially if I'm doing something that's very pigmented or dramatic. I would say get the color down, get it to be as opaque as possible, and then we start blending a little bit on the edge, softening it up a bit. That is such a gorgeous red. So I've been using the darker red. I'm gonna use the lighter red just a little bit with this EO4, just a little bit to blend out the edge. So what I always do, and I've done this in all of these videos, to keep it, because this is, not horrible, but it's not a smooth blend. Like we can do a little bit better than that. Depending on what look you're looking for. Sometimes we want something that's, um, I'm holding my lid because you can see it's moving. So if I hold it, it's not moving as much. Sometimes we want something that's a little bit more structured. We don't want the soft, like smooth blend. I usually am not striving to get like a perfect blend. I'm usually striving for something that's like good enough. It's smooth, it's blended, but I'm not looking for perfection because I don't have time for that. And also, I mean, you're super close to my eye right now. You can see everything. You can see the wrinkles, you can see the pores, you can see the blend. You're not gonna be this close to me when we're like meeting in real life. You're not gonna be able to see that much of the blend. So it doesn't really need to be under a microscope kind of a perfect. This is enough. You see, it's it's more blended than this. It's not perfect when you get up close, but it's good enough. Don't stress yourself, and that goes for everything in life. Don't stress yourself over details that doesn't matter and that only you see and notice. Okay, I'm gonna use the same dark red under my eye, and let me see if I can do a little bit of the light red too. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to do that light blue angels and I'm going to put that on the inner part of the of the lid and I'm going to spray it because it's a little flaky and I already put mats down and 
I'm just trying to get the best result possible. I spray all my shimmers. Almost always spray every shimmer. Okay, 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 okay. Putting that in the inner part. That is such a beautiful color. So I think I'm gonna do it like this. Just like not too detailed, but like just the blue. And then I'm gonna do that Vengeance, which is that dark black. You can see it has like specks of like colored glitter in it. I say glitter, but it's more like a sparkle. It's not like a pressed glitter by any means. And I'm gonna put that out here. Because I want it to be a little darker out here. And then we can do a little bit of a matte black out here. I mean, there are a dark gray and then there's like an almost black and a black. I'm gonna do the crow one, the one that's like the true black. And now I'm gonna do a little bit of that in the outer corner because I don't like shimmer to be all the way out here. And I think that this will be a nice end to the little gradient going from blue to like almost black and then a black matte. So I'm just gonna deepen up the outer corner a little bit with this black matte just for a little bit more added drama. Okay, I dug hard and I found a clean brush and I'm gonna do Shelly, which is like the little iridescent shade. I think we're gonna try and just do a little bit of that. Not much, Ju I, I, I don't wanna have it much because it's gonna accentuate the, the fold that I have there because my hooded eyes are on the inside, not on the outside. So you have to find new ways to make the hood work for you and not against you. But yeah, I think I have something going on. I'm actually gonna do red in my waterline. I have one from MAC that I'm gonna use, like an old one, it's like the Chroma Graphic Liner. Oh, is it even here? Or did I move it? No, I moved it, but I'm gonna use the red from MAC. Uh, I'm gonna do a little mascara and a lash. But this is really cool. I love uh, a mix between cool tones and warm tones. Love it. I look so fierce right now. I am absolutely loving this look. And I mean, if you want drama, <laughs> there's definitely drama in this palette. This is really cool. And I'm really loving the, the mix between like the reds and uh, the cool tones. For me, grays is just never gonna be my favorite. So for me, like this color story, I love that there are reds in here. I love that there's a blue in here. The shimmers are really, really incredible. The grays are just never gonna be my favorite. So for me, this palette is gonna be something that I reach for when I want something like this or when I wanna mix something like this together because sometimes you just wanna add drama to a palette that doesn't have drama. This is the perfect drama adder, something like that. If you love cool tones and you want cool tones with a twist, this is definitely that because you're getting some different things. I will let you know this one. This gray right here, it is the one shadow I swatched it. I was like, it's very, very hard pressed. So before I like do a final review of this palette, I definitely need to use this one on my eye because it was very hard to pick up when I was swatching it. So I wanna see how it is on the eye. So I'm just putting out like a little like public announcement about this gray shade here. I was not impressed with that one compared of how I felt about the other shadows because they felt amazing and you can see how they look on the eyes. This one was the one where I was like, I don't know about this one. But other than that, I think this palette is really pretty. Let's get into the fourth look. And when I'm filming this, I actually don't know what my fourth palette is gonna be, but you'll find out right now.
so excited to be playing with the High Temp by Unearthly Cosmetics. There are bronzers and there's an eyeshadow palette. I've already shown you some swatches. The bronzers that I have is a light and I have medium. And Amanda, the owner, told me that she thought that medium would be too dark for me now, but that I would be able to use this once I have a little bit more tan closer in the summer. I think she's correct and that light uh, will be the one for me. I will say this one has a little pink in it, which makes me a little worried, a little worried, but hopefully this will be fine. Um, this collection is launching later on. I will put the information in the description box, but I'm going to try the light one and we are going to see. There's also a fair and there is a deep. So I have two of the shades and this is clearly a little bit of a shimmery one. Oh, that is pretty. It's not like super pigmented straight out of the gate, which can be nice, makes it easier to work with. I think I'm gonna like put this on top as well and just use this as a highlighter bronzer, like all in one. That is pretty. It's actually a really nice color. I do prefer something that's a little bit more golden, but there is a little gold in here too. So this is the bronzer on one side and not on the other. I love the sheen of it. I think it might be a little bit more on the pinky tone than I prefer myself as a bronzer, but it does look really, really good. Should we use a little bit of this like medium one? This also has, as you can see, some pink in it. I'm gonna use a more detailed brush. This is the F03, and I'm just gonna put a little bit up here. Yeah, it's definitely darker. And I'm just, I'm not going to do too much. Just a little bit up here. If you don't want a bronzer that's too warm, this might be for you. I think personally, I need something that's a little warmer than this. I'm also going to use just the blush from Spring Magic. I'm going to be using, let's use this one, the more pinky. Uh, coral. It's called Incantation. I love the finish of this bronzer. It's really pretty, but the undertone is a little too pinky cool tone to be perfect for me, for my undertone. And I mean, that's just the way that it is with some bronzers. If you do not have a warmer undertone in your skin like I do, I'm sure they're going to be great. So yeah, this blush is from the uh, Spring Magic blush palette. It's also from Unearthly. And I thought this would be perfect. Looks like this. And I'm also wearing uh, a liquid lipstick. This is an orange. This is gnarly. And this was in a... It was in a mystery box for last summer. I don't know if she's selling this as a single, but it's beautiful. So I just did my nails and I did them pink and red. So I really want to play with this one. But I also like, this is my jam. Like this is my jam. So I'm thinking... I don't know. I kind of want to start with the red. Let's start with the red. It's called Heated. Because like, how am I supposed to play with this palette and not play with the yellow? Like, I don't even know if that's possible. I think I'm going to try and make this look bright, but not dark. So I think the red, I don't think I'm going to use Scald, which is that dark, like, plummy brown. I think I'm going to keep it like this so that the red is the darkest. So I'm gonna use both of these shades, the fiery and the summery. So we're gonna use the fiery first. And I'm gonna put that next to this red and just blend a little bit on the edge, super low. I'm gonna continue to blend with the summery, which is that yellow to make it more clearly orange because you can see there's not that much of a difference between these two shades i might even use that pastel yellow too and same here i'm just gonna put a little more and i think i'm gonna put in the inner part of the crease like this mm -hmm. this is the pastel yellow bright i love a good pastel yellow and I'm using that bright in the inner part here as well, that like light yellow. I'm gonna do this under my eyes as well and just clearly finish this eye up. I was just like trying to figure stuff out. I mean, look at this fiery look. I am gonna use a little bit of eye primer. I'm just gonna use very little. Let me see if I can show you. I'm just 
doing a little dot and I'm just gonna reapply a little bit here and I'm using not a flat brush this is an EO4 and I'm just gonna reapply a little bit so that we can do the matte pink on top of this and it has something to grip to so you can see I'm not doing a cut crease I'm just like reapplying like this and then we're gonna do it's called warm this one the matte baby pink and you can see I have the primer on this side so I'm putting that on the other side and I'm literally just going in with it and I want to see how this is again I'm not trying to do like a cut crease or anything like that I might do a little line here just to accentuate this but I just wanted the pink to like attach to something because I've already put like the yellow down and I didn't want to mix them together so it's like a soft half cut crease that actually looks really really cute I'm gonna take it into the inner corner a little bit and I think I'm gonna do that light like yellow and I think I'm gonna put that actually yeah that will do better in the inner corner I think that looks really pretty I just didn't want to do I don't mind being predictable but I also wanted to show you like how can you incorporate this lower row into the top row in case you wanted to do something together we are going to be using glowing this is the pink metallic and I did spray this one and we are just gonna do a little bit of that here where um, the pink and the red meet in the middle of the eye to have a little bit of shimmer and to have them meet together and maybe I'll do a little bit of blazing as well which is the red metallic just on the edge here to make everything make sense that's actually really cute so this is the look with some mascara on and i mean i really loved that i was able to get some pink in here because i was so inspired by my like look at this i mean i'm very impressed it looks super beautiful is this my favorite look maybe because i love colors like this and i love the pink and red and yellow together and it's, oh, it's so gorgeous i think the bronzers are good quality but it's not a perfect shade for me but like you can tell when i got like a blush on it does look really good like this is definitely something i could be using but when i choose a perfect color for myself i usually choose something that's leaning a little bit more golden than this but if you are looking for a bronzer that's luminous that has that's leaning a little bit more not cool tone necessarily but it has a little bit of a rosy undertone these might be perfect for you and i love seeing indie brands like lean into other product categories and like trying new things this palette honestly I love it like this is such a good color story for me and it's two-thirds mattes and one-third shimmer which I think is the perfect ratio and there's just so many things that I could be doing with this palette like just these alone like it's just really inspiring colors and you can see this like purple golden shade here so beautiful like the mattes and the shimmers from uh, Unearthly are just per usual really really beautiful and i'm wondering now that i have all the palettes here in front of me which are my favorite i actually think the unearthly palette is my favorite because of the color story it's just a perfect color story and i always love i always love the simply posh palettes i do wish that one of these mattes were just a hint lighter so that i can use it as an inner corner highlight but again that is just a personal preference that's just that's just me there's nothing wrong with the shades they all work really well together and the shimmers are incredible and i really really like simply posh i think the quality of this palette is beautiful it's a neutral palette like how excited can i be I usually like a neutral palette that has a little bit more of a twist to it than this because this is a neutral palette but with a multi-chrome in here and I do think that it's a very interesting multi-chrome and I am excited to see that it is a more neutral leaning multi-chrome because I feel like that just fits better with a neutral palette if you're looking for a neutral palette again and especially if you're living in the EU and you want to order something that's from a brand that's within the EU borders this could be a good alternative I also really like this palette this is the crow palette me I will never be drawn to these like 
cool tone grays and stuff. So a lot of the shades in this palette is falling flat for me because of the color choice, not because of the quality. This like shade here, the metallic one that has the multicolored shimmer in it, it's probably one of the more unique shades I have in my collection. And I really, really would like to do a like smoky eye with this shade right here. I actually have an event that I'm doing this weekend. I might do like a smoky eye with this one. I will say also this blue here, I did put it like all over my lid and I put it above my crease. It did crease on me, this one here. So it's very emollient. It goes on really beautiful, but I did have to tap out the crease a couple of times. So if you're like me and you have a little bit more hooded eyes, that could be good to know that this one did crease a little bit on me. And usually I don't have problems with eyeshadows creasing on me because I don't use glitter glue. I just set my primer with some matte and then do the shimmer above. Usually I use a setting spray that has a little bit of glycerin in it to just make everything adhere. So I usually don't have problems with fading or creasing of either of my mattes or shimmers, but sometimes when the shimmers are very emollient, some of the Cleonad ones, some of the Odin's Eye ones, not the ones in the palettes, but some of the singles, some of the Adept Cosmetics ones, and also some of the shadows in this one do crease a little bit and you have to pat it out. So I'm just letting you know that that is the formula that that blue had. I hope this video is helpful. Again, this is not a shop with me kind of a video. If nothing else, I hope you were able to see four colorful tutorials, maybe inspire you to shop your stash and to create something similar. I hope you're having a great day. Don't forget to subscribe before you leave. The algorithm is showing you a video here next to me that they think is going to be perfect for you. But if you have to go, you have to go and I will see you soon in a new video. Bye!